Hi, welcome to this video presentation on psychological first aid created for the UBDCP Common Module Knowledge Products. Note, however, that this video is only a brief introduction to the concept. And if you wish to know more about this, there are available certified training workshops. And the training duration varies from one day to a week, depending on the context and application of psychological first aid and which you would like to know about. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ruth Edison Ryle Sedian Cercado. I am an assistant professor at the Division of Social Sciences of the University of the Philippines, Visayas Tacloban College. I teach mostly psychology courses, but I also handle G courses such as SAS, uh, SOCSI 5, and Ethics. I have a BA Social Sciences degree and also a master's degree in psychology, which I obtained from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. I live in Tacloban City, one of the cities on the island of Leyte in the Eastern Visayas region. Because of our archipelagic position, we frequently experience typhoons throughout the year. And one of the most powerful typhoons to ever hit Eastern Visayas was Typhoon Yolanda way back in 2013. And the deadly storm surge killed more than 6,000 people and left 5.8 billion damages. Um, since aside from the physical and material damages, the psychosocial well-being of survivors were affected because of challenges such as grief, loss, and readjustment. And since 2013, many other destructive typhoons have hit our region, the most recent of which to have made landfall in eastern Visayas was Typhoon Agaton just this April of 2022. The heavy rainfall resulted in numerous landslides and flooding in different barangays in eastern Visayas, most specifically in the towns of Baybay and Abuyo Blade. There were reportedly 151 confirmed deaths and 104 missing individuals. And this came as a surprise to many because it happened during a supposedly hot summer season. Yupita Cloban lives up to its mandate of providing public service. And in the wake of the disaster, relief efforts are geared towards not only helping survivors access basic needs, such as food, water, and temporary shelter, but also accessing mental health and psychosocial support services. On February of this year, I, together with some psychology faculty and alumni, joined a team of physicians from UP Manila and Office of the Ugnayan ng Pahinyod System to deliver a follow-up psychosocial mission in the Masawa Island, Southern Leyte, which was badly damaged by Typhoon Death. I led the administration of psychological first aid to 371 adults in the six barangays of the Masawa. And just this May of 2022, psychological first aid was also given to disaster survivors of Typhoon Agaton who were staying in temporary shelters. Through the generous donors that we have, we were able to provide PFA to more than 400 adults and even distribute mental health kits. As we all know, disasters impact mental health by disrupting family and community structures, threatening our sense of safety and control. And the impact of disasters on mental health is even worse for people with pre-existing vulnerabilities. Most people who experience distressing events may recover and return to normal levels of functioning. We do not pathologize their normal reactions to stress. Some could effectively cope on their own, but some who have very strong reactions may require additional help and specialized support. And this is mainly because stress reactions vary from one person to another. Now, what is psychological first aid? PFA, it's an initial disaster response intervention that promotes safety, stabilizes survivors of disasters, and connects individuals to help and access resources. That is how the American Psychological Association defined psychological first aid. PFA is not crisis counseling. This is all that we have to remember. It's not only limited to professionals. It's not asking people to analyze their experience 
definitely not also psychological debriefing and not pressuring people to talk about their reactions to the distressing event. PFA is an evidence-informed interventional model given during or in the immediate aftermath of a disaster that is designed to limit the distress and promote adaptive coping behaviors. It has been proven to be an early and effective intervention provided by trained caregivers. PFA has also been effective as a rapid psychological intervention for victim survivors of different emergency settings, such as natural calamities, wars, road accidents, personal trauma, and even outbreak of infection. PFA has been effective in mitigating the psychosocial impact of previous epidemics like SARS. Now come 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has upended our lives, disrupted our regular routines, and forced school closures, and basically isolated us from the rest of the world. But in 2020, there was no known cure, and the feelings of helplessness and anxiety were becoming overwhelming. The big question for us was how could we provide psychological first aid amid the pandemic, because it used to be given in person or face-to-face. -face. Given the health restrictions and limited mobility during the height of the pandemic, how could we still continue providing psychological first aid? Can we do it through other platforms, like through phones, through social media, through the use of internet? Can we maximize the use of technology? So for example, UP Tacloban established its mental health and psychosocial support services COVID-19 response. We developed a set of guidelines on the online and remote delivery of psychological first aid to medical frontliners and to UP Tacloban students, faculty, and staff. So we limited only the individuals who could benefit from our psychological first aid, again, because of the limited availability also of responders during that period. From our experience, PFA is a useful model to provide emotional support, foster resilience, and self-efficacy during a health crisis. Now, our question as we relate psychological first aid to NSTP is, why is it important for you as an NSTP student to learn the practices of psychological first aid? Number one, Philippines is located along the typhoon belt, and we experience an average of 20 typhoons yearly. In fact, we rank ninth in the 2020 World Risk Index report. So empowering our citizens, therefore, by providing psychological first aid training is vital in disaster management preparedness. And this will address the needs of persons in distress exposed to trauma, disasters, and other emergency settings. There is also the importance of promoting and increasing mental health literacy. Because as we say, there is no health without mental health. We should not only respond to the physical needs of individuals during disasters in emergency settings or a global health crisis, but we also have to acknowledge the psychosocial needs in designing disaster preparedness plans. One of the challenges in emergency preparedness and management is the limited availability of skilled PFA professionals to offer services. And we personally experienced this when we wanted to provide psychological first aid in Dimasawa, Southern Leyte. So when Typhoon Agaton hit uh, Bye Bye and Abuyo Leyte, we decided to call for volunteers. And there were around 200 individuals who signed up as volunteers. And we were able to train them and deploy them to Typhoon Agaton affected communities. So training lay persons in PFA is crucial in ensuring the availability of individuals capable of providing the necessary psychological intervention in the event of disasters such as fire, explosion, accidents, or disease outbreak. Some of the best individuals to help and support kids actually who are experiencing trauma are their own peer groups, says Anusha Brown, the chief emergency 
Advocacy and Global Programs Officer for UNICEF USA. So how can we do this in the classroom setting? We can have simulation in small groups. They will practice and learn what to say upon contact with survivors. You will learn how to check for safety and comfort. You will learn how to gather information, stabilize the person in distress, and identify needs and obtain information on their coping behaviors. And of course, be able to link them and connect them to available services because that is what PFA is all about, how we, list, how we look, how we listen, and how we link them to available support services. So in closing, I would say that I hope you will find interest in psychological first aid and you will avail of the training workshops that are being offered by different institutions, such as the Psychological Association of the Philippines. So thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope you learned from my short discussion.